So I'm going to talk about the uh, problems with training, cost, resource intensivity, technical concerns, sure. the um, issues around conversion, safety, and limitations. Now, the other speakers have uh, alluded to training, but I'm going to talk about the problems in training. And of course, uh, one of the prerequisites is that you should have a large experience, depending on the procedure you're talking about, of perhaps 50 to 200 uh, procedures, especially if you're talking liver section. I, I don't believe you should uh, embark on minimal access liver surgery without at least 200 liver surgeries under your belt. And um, perhaps an experience of laparoscopic surgery, similarly between 10 and 50 operations, depending on the operation you're doing. And then you probably have to go through the, uh, <coughs> the steps of uh, open, lap, then animal, then courses. And I think that there should be a certification. Although it's not been traditional in surgery to certify people for new things and new techniques, but I believe that people like the Vaticuti Foundation, like the Clinical Research, uh, uh, Clinical Robotics uh, uh, Surgery Institute, they should be certifying people after a certain number of uh, training hours or procedures. And then, um, it is said that this learning curve may be actually shorter than laparoscopic surgery. That is probably true because of the uh, three-dimensional view and uh, you know, the endo-listed instruments and the fact that you're able to operate on the instruments in a very similar way to open surgery. So that may be true. But the point is that <coughs> if you add the, um, the training, the learning curve for laparoscopic surgery to the learning curve of the robotic surgery, then the switch from open to robotic probably is going to take you the same time. Now the other problem is, as is true in all other, all other specialties, open and laparoscopic surgery are already highly successful. So the, the benchmark is high. So if you do robotic surgery, you better reach that benchmark or pretty close to it. Otherwise, you can't justify it to anyone <coughs> and of course to yourself as well. And at the end of the day, <coughs> whatever you do, whatever courses you do, you have to practice on patients. Let's all face it. I hope there's no media guys there. You have to practice on patients. And what are the ethics about that? And that's a big question, of course. Then the cost. Cost of setup, cost of the robot, cost of the upgrading of the equipment in the, in the main robot itself. We went to Grosetto. There were three robots there, two for clinical surgery, one for the animal lab. Each was a higher generation than the previous one. So, not a lot of centers can actually afford to keep upgrading their uh, robot every three, four years. Uh, of course, there may be lease and other agreements with the company. Then, the cost effectiveness is far from being proven for most robotic procedures. I believe that only uh, in some pediatric procedures and in carcinoma prostate, the cost effectiveness has in fact been proven. And I believe that it will be proven even in hepatobiliary surgery procedures, but probably it's going to take some time. We are in the early phase of evolution. The average extra cost of a hepatobiliary procedure among the six that we have done at Medanta has been about 90,000 rupees to one lakh. And that includes an average cost of about 10,000 per instrument, about 20,000 per harmonic, and about 18,000 for the drape. And uh, again, it's an added cost. We've informed our patients, we've gone ahead. Uh, even the uh, Wati Kuti Foundation and the Medanta Institute have supported us in this, but it is the cost, uh, which is important nevertheless. And then, most initial cases, mind you, it's something that I discussed with you, are assisted or pre-planned conversions so again, you need to justify uh, this cost-wise. Resource intensive, I, I think I won't dwell on this. Rahul has already dwelt on this in quite a lot of detail. Uh, the only thing I think that Rahul didn't touch on and I'd really like to touch on is that you need two senior surgeons for every procedure. And a senior surgeon is worth a lot, I think. And I don't mean money-wise. I mean, his time is very important. You, you probably have like three ORs running with two senior surgeons <coughs> otherwise. So if you have two senior surgeons in the same OR in a long 10-hour procedure, then, then you've got to look at your resource utilization. Technical concerns, I'll discuss this in a little more detail because it's not been touched upon previously. Equipment currently is suboptimal for precise liver splitting and intrahepatic dissection. Sure, you can use tissue link, you can use harmonic or ultrasonic dissector, but the precision you can achieve with a QSA or in some cases, water jet is unparalleled. And in experience centers, 
in our center, an average liver split takes about an hour nowadays. So, uh, I've actually, uh, we have uh, initiated by uh, Amit, we have started to use the harmonic uh, scalpel, the active lower blade as a dissector. But it is not perfect. It's a little pointy. And it does tend to perforate blood vessels, especially veins, especially if they are friable in a fatty liver. So, you know, these are real problems which we face. Then, CUSA remains the gold standard. In the last 1,500 hepatectomies by our group, the mean time of transaction has been about 88 minutes, but recently it's been more like 50, 60 minutes. Um, other technical concerns, hemostatic suturing is better than lap, of course, because the field is very like open. But it is not as precise as an open because you don't have those fine tipped vascular needle holders. I mean, you cannot hold a 6 or 7 o needle very conveniently in the, in the needle holders that are available for robotic work. And, you know, you're used to isolating the tissue above or rather removing or teasing away the tissue above <coughs> and below a vessel and then isolating the vessel and hemostasizing it or ligating it. That advantage you do not have in in all the views of uh, robotic surgery because seeing the vessel above or uh, seeing, seeing the space above the vessel is not always possible. Above means cranial. It's the robotic arm that is feeling it. Then retraction is not great with the current uh, serpentine and the other retractors that we have. It's okay but you know if you cannot change it frequently as is often required in open liver surgery. Then if you're talking about donor hepatectomy, you need the vessel lengths. And if you use staplers, you will lose 2 to 3 millimeters. And that's true of laparoscopic as it's true of robotic. Nothing specific with robotic. Hemolock clips. Those are the only ones I would rely on for clipping important blood vessels. But then they are thicker than, the, than your usual uh, ligger clip or, or a suture. So again, you lose a little bit of vessel length. Sometimes you don't have much less vessel length. Especially when you're actually taking off the liver from the cava in the caudate lobe dissection, sometimes the vessel lengths are very small. And occasionally, even small chartopatics can actually bleed a lot. Then, bilirubin and hyaluronic dissection is again not as precise um, uh, because you, you, it's difficult to see all sides. And as you know, uh, most of your liver surgeons will know that there are like anywhere between three and eight caudate bile ducts or hepatic ducts. And unless you visualize the entire hyaloplate, you are going to get bile leaks later, which may not be significant in a non-donor hepatectomy, but a donor hepatectomy it could be pretty important, both for the patient and recipient and the donor. Conversion, it doesn't take that much time. I mean, de-docking takes about a minute. It doesn't take that long. But overall, I think <coughs> by the time you get to the bleeder, it might be three, four, five, six minutes. And occasionally, not often, Hepatic vein bleed can be quite massive and uh, air embolism may be a problem at that point, not because of the pneumoperitoneum, but because of the bleed and a hole in a vein. And of course, you know, all the safety issues I've listed out, that's the time taken for the procedure, the bleeding, the embolism, bile leak and, comprom and, and prom compromise on the precision. This all may be evened out with the learning curve. I, I agree that these are probably learning curve issues, they're not direct safety issues. But of course, patients, poor guys who are actually having surgery, the first 10, 15, 20 surgeries done by you, for them it's a safety issue. Limitations, again, Professor Gilinotti has probably removed everything uh, possible in the abdomen or operated on everything possible with, with, with the robot. But most of us are lesser mortals, are scared of large tumors, higher liver tumors, right hepatectomy with middle hepatic vein resection or dissection right extended hepatectomy. In donors, right and left, again, has not been done. I mean, okay, you guys have done one right hepatectomy for donors, right? Something like that. But it's not a commonly attempted procedure. Um, previous hepatobiliary surgery, again, it's a learning curve issue. With previous surgery, you should be able to do it. Fatty livers, big tumors, big resection is a problem. Because, again, it requires retraction. And when you retract the fatty liver, you know that we all tend to go uh, into the liver parenchyma. Chronic pancreatitis, tumors stuck to the, uh, you know, the unsinate tumors or the juxta vessel tumors, the vascular tumors, all ones requiring vascular resection. 
it may be difficult both laparoscopically and robotically. So I'm not going to say any more negative stuff because Dr. Mahindra Bhandari is peering really hard at me. And <laughs> but my topic is, uh, is concerns about robotic surgery. Uh, let's say that we are all actually very excited to have begun this program in our institute. And I think in general, it's made an exciting beginning and the advantages are obvious. But it will need expertise in laparoscopic surgery also, at least in HPV. Cost will need to be brought down, equipment needs to be improved, and equip equipment improvement, I think, has to do with, in liver surgery, with retractors, with needle holders, with CUSA, and if you have a harmonic, it should be wristed. Currently, it's not. So really, the advantage of robotic surgery is lost. Then, complex accountability surgery will have a long learning curve that you have to accept. And universal application is a while away. Thank you very much.